Hello everyone, uh, welcome back to how to create a 2D endless runner using Unity. Uh, today's part 3. Uh, we're going to be covering getting the game that we had already, uh, working in the newest version of Unity, um, as well as some player deaths, and just some general improvements. Uh, it should be a pretty short video, um, so yeah, let's get started. So, here we are in our scene, from where we took off. Um, not much has really changed. All I've done is I've moved a script that we had just sitting in the assets folder into the scripts, which is just our block delete. And yeah, so if you haven't updated to the newest version of Unity, I'd recommend you do it. Uh, the newest version of Unity now does its scripts straight through Mono, uh, no longer through Mono Develop and does it through Visual Studio, which is a significant change really. Um, there was always the option to do it before they did this, but now it's just the native option. Um, so yeah, I'd recommend upgrading to this. Um, so yeah, if we just have a look at our game, once that opens up, cool. Uh, so if we press play, we'll see that the physics is a little bit different in the new version. And the game goes very, very fast, and we lose our player. So that's one of the things we're going to have to fix to begin with. Um, it's a pretty simple fix. We just need to come over to our player and our scene and change a few of the values here in the rigid body. Um, all we really need to do is change our drag, just adding uh, linear drag to 2 and angular drag to 2 should be fine, and all that does is adds drag to the player. Um, it's pretty simple really. So now if we press play, we have our player moving. As you can see, it's really pretty slow. So we just want to adjust power, which if you remember was um, basically the value of the speed of the character. That's a bit better. Probably want to make the jump a little bit bigger. And before we finish doing all that, we probably want to come back to our player script. And this here was our uh, code for moving a player and doing jumping, um, as well as down here. This here was our check to see if the player has finished jumping so that you can jump again. Um, so this line of code here was the line of code that's moving our player. It's just getting the rigid body from the player and adding force in the direction of right. Um, as you can see, we're not using um, time dot delta time, which is a unity thing that we could normally use to make it so that all of this happens at a set time and it doesn't happen at different speeds on different quality computers. Um, we probably should have had that, but instead we're going to change our update to a fixed update, which is going to do the same kind of thing, but instead of just doing it to the one line that we add time.delta time, it's going to do it to everything in the update. So now everything in here is going to run on a fixed cycle, which is good. So now we want to save that and come back to our game. And then let it load in. And then we'll see how this is going. Okay, so player should be moving a lot faster now. And got a good jump. Yeah, so everything seems pretty good now. A lot more playable. Um, but as you can see, player still isn't dying and well that's not very fun we want that and the level is falling off too quick so we need to fix that as well um, so to begin with we'll add some player death so to do that we just become dot player script and we want to add a similar thing to what we were doing here to test if our player has hit the ground but instead of checking if he has land like um hit the colli collider on the outside, we're going to test if he's entered a trigger. And a trigger is just a collider, but one that can be entered and is a zone to trigger something. Um, so we need new void called on trigger enter 2D D is a capital brackets and then this is going to take a collision 2D called call. And this is just the 
uh, 2D box collider that is on our player. Uh, the same one we're using up here. So up here we're using it to check if the player has touched the ground. Over here we're going to be using it to check if the player has entered that trigger. And if so, will we do something? So to do that, we just want to have if call dot game object dot tag equals def, which is a tag that we'll assign in just one second. Then we want to load the level again. Um, what this would do is basically reset the level and make give you the appearance of the player dying. Um, so I want to load level to zero. Okay, so if I just run you through this code quickly, it's basically the same things that we have up here. Um, we're using void. We're using a function called on void trigger enter. I mean void on trigger enter. Um, it takes in the collider of the player and checks if its collider equals the collider with the tag def. And if it does, then it will reload the level. So if we save this, control S, come back to our game, let it load in. Okay, and now if we come down into here, go to our red points, Add a box collider because we're going to need that to make our triggers. Box collider 2D and set is trigger. And then if we hit this little uh, button here, it allows us to easily change the size of these just by touching the squares, clicking on the squares and dragging. So we just want to change the size of them down. And then hit apply. We also need to add a tag, so add a new tag. Tag's going to be called def, like we said in our script. So set that, come back over to this one, and add the tag def. And then apply. So now I just need to do that for every block. Um, I'm not going to change the size of all of them, but obviously you'll want to so that the player doesn't die when he's actually not touching it. But just to save some time, we're not going to do that. So. I just want to go through and do all of this. Yeah. Death. <laughs> okay. So now, if we press play, it won't work because we haven't set what load level means. So we need to come back over to File, go to Build Settings, and see how we have no scenes in the build. So we'll click Add Current, and now our current scene, scene 1, equals level 0. And if we come back to our code, you'll see we're loading level 0. Because we didn't have anything in here, nothing happened. So now that we have that, we can just exit out of here and press play again, and hopefully our player should die. Okay, so still not working. So now we need to work out why that is. So let's have a look at our script again. Wait, where's the thing down here? Needs to be of type collider 2D. Okay, so that's my fault. Um, hmm, wait. Did we accidentally set? Yeah, I'm not quite sure why this is not working. So let's just have a few of these. Level fine. Player. See, so everything has a 2D collider on it. Um, I'm triggering to 2D. This formula has to be of a type collider 2D. So, oh, it's meant to be a collider, not collision. 
So glider. Is that the right spelling? <laughs> yeah. So let's try that again. Yep. Now if the player hits something, he dies. Yeah, so that's obviously not the best how it is at the moment. So let's just make a little starting area where the player can't die. To do that, we'll grab any of our blocks, Control D to copy it. And now, if we change anything on this block, it's no longer going to be connected to this prefab, which is what we want. So if we come over to here and we just change this back to white, turn off its box collider, we'll just actually remove its box collider. And then remove the tag of death. Do not apply because if you apply, you're going to change this one as well. You don't want that. Um, and then we just want to set it to zero, zero, and now it's at the start. Okay, so we already have a block sword in here, so we want to move it back to here. And then perhaps uh, you might want to go control D again and put another one here. And then we just position our player over here at the start, and now when we press play, the player has a little starting area, and then we get into the game where you can die. Okay, so I think that's just about it for this episode. We have improved all the player movements, made the game something a little bit more controllable. We do still need to actually fix that problem, where the level is spawning off quicker. But yeah, we'll do that quickly just now. Um, so, come back into our scripts and open up block delete. Um, we want to change this value here from 2 to 3. And then that will just make it so the blocks get deleted slower. We want to come over to block spawn and change this value to perhaps something like. 1.2, we'll try that. And this is going to affect the value that they are spawned at. So we press play once the script is finished compiling. Let's zoom out a little bit. So the play is going off. Died. <laughs> that doesn't help us. So the level seems to be spawning at a pretty good rate. Let's just see. I need to try and not die. Oh yeah, well, that seems fine for now. If there's any problems in that, we can always fix it up later. Um, but yeah, so that's the real basics of player death with just adding a delete, uh, collision detection, which then just loads the level. Um, it's kind of a hacky way of doing it, but it works quite well in a lot of instances. Um, you can use scripts that uh, make it so certain objects um, don't get deleted when you reload the scene, and that way we can keep score even if we completely reload the level, um, which I think we'll probably cover in the next episode. But yeah, hopefully you enjoyed that. If you did, please comment, subscribe. If you've got any questions, just yeah, leave a comment, like I said. And yeah, cheers.